but I will do it in a second. Okay, maybe it, it says live already. That's why my screen. Yeah, uh, let me close my video and then I'm going to open it because I think we're still, are we in practice? I think we're live, Juan. Sorry, oh, guys. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting right here, which is finalizing the tech issues. <laughs> Okay, cool. Then Marie, take it away. Okay, sounds good. Thanks so much, Juan. And thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, so sorry about the small tech issues. It's always a bit of a, of a struggle. Uh, but thanks a lot for joining us today. My name is Marie Nugier. I'm the Head of Research and Communications at the International Drug Policy Consortium. Um, yeah, brilliant. Thanks for letting us know we're live. Um, so just before we start, please select your language channel. So we're really happy to have the webinar interpreted into French and Spanish. So you can do that at the bottom of your screen. There is an interpretation globe and then you can choose your language. Um, so hopefully that will be working smoothly. If it isn't, please just drop us a message in the chat and we'll sort it out. Um, so Juan, do you want to go to the next slide? Brilliant, thank you. Um, so yeah, so welcome to our 65th session of the CND webinar. Um, so the CND is going to be taking place on uh, Monday the 14th to Friday the 18th of March. And each year in preparation for the CND, IDPC organizes these webinars to facilitate civil society participation in the debates. Um, so in this webinar, we're aiming to shed some light on the issues that are likely to come up during the CND discuss the tabled resolutions and highlight opportunities for civil society engagements and in particular in the new hybrid format. Um, and the idea is also to showcase some of the experiences of the IDPC network in leveraging the forum for political advocacy. So hopefully we'll be able to do all this today in uh, the next hour or so. Throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A functionality of Zoom, or if you're uh, watching us through the YouTube chat, you can also ask your questions or post your comments there. Um, Juan, can you go to the next slide? Thank you. So as I said before, this webinar is being organized by the International Drug Policy Consortium, or IDPC. So for those of you who don't know us, uh, we're a global network of NGOs that come together to repair the harms of punitive drug policies and also to promote just responses that are grounded in human rights and social justice. And one of IDPC's key objectives is to ensure the meaningful participation of civil society in decision making processes, including at the United Nations. And the UN drug policy debates are particularly opaque and difficult to navigate. And that's why we've been proposing a series of tools um, and webinars to support NGOs that want to discuss and uh, follow the, the CND, really. Um, so this webinar is one of these tools, and I will mention a few others that we have in our bags uh, in, the, in the next few slides. So um, hopefully that'll be helpful to you. In this webinar, I'm not going to go into detail about what the CND actually is and how it functions, because we have this really great short video that we put together a few years back. Uh, it's only 10 minutes long, but it basically provides you a brief overview of all the stuff that you need to know on the CND, and it's subtitled in various languages as well. So hopefully um, you'll find it useful. And obviously, if you have any questions that haven't been addressed in the video or in this webinar, feel free to contact us as well. So in terms of the structure of today's webinar, we're going to go through some key information and events that are taking place at this year's CND. We're also going to go through each of the resolution that is tabled at the CND for this year, and that will be presented by Nazi Magsudi from the Center on Drug Policy Evaluation in Canada. Thanks so much, Nazi, for joining us. Um, and after that, we'll be really privileged to have uh, two colleagues from the network who have agreed to share their experience of engagement at the CMD and its impact on their own advocacy. And these are Charity Monareng from the TBHIV Care in South Africa and John Mellis from the Norwegian Association for Humane Drug Policies. So thanks so much to you three for joining us today. And then, as I said, I'll run you through a few useful resources that you could use ahead of or at the CND. And we'll also have a bit of time for questions and answers. So make sure that you ask those either in the Q&A, in the chat on Zoom, or uh, in the chat on the YouTube channel. 
Okay, so first of all, um, participation. Uh, so participation is really complicated this year because it is going to be a hybrid format. Um, but basically, uh, there are three avenues for civil society participation, which are summarized here. And I wanted to give big thanks to the VNGOC for putting this together. because It's actually incredibly helpful in terms of summarizing how the CND is going to work for us this year. So basically, the first way to participate is in person in Vienna. <clears throat> so this is going to be very limited this year. So NGOs can enter the Vienna International Center where the, the CND is going to take place, but only eight NGO representatives will be allowed to enter the plenary session at any given time. And this is going to be coordinated by the VNGOC. And now it's also looking unlikely that anybody from civil society will be making it into the committee of the whole in person. So it's actually going to be really difficult to be inside the rooms um, in person. The second way to participate is online um, and you can register to attend via the online platform, which is Interprofy. And as last year, there's going to be about 150 slots for NGOs to be able to do that. This is great because it enables you to follow the plenary meetings, but also the committee of the whole to make statements and to interact live with the participants at the CND via the chat functionality. Um, so um, just, to, just to clarify, NGOs wishing to make statements at the CND um, can do so, but this is going to be um, coordinated by the Vienna NGO Committee on Drugs ahead of time. So, so let's see how that works. And then finally, the, the last way you can participate is via the webcast. Um, so that way, unfortunately, you can only uh, follow the plenary, but you don't have to do anything else than just go onto the CND webpage and follow the webcast. So you don't have to register online and it's incredibly easy. And uh, that way it's open to as many people as possible. So, so that's the third way. If you have any questions or doubts on that, just let us know in the chat. Um, so just a very brief uh, point on who is going to chair the CND this year. Um, so the CND plenary will be chaired by the, the delegation from Belgium and the committee of the whole will be chaired by Colombia this year. So they are the vice chair. Then looking at the agenda, um, so the schedule for this year is going to be a bit different from the previous years. Um, the good news is that side events are not going to run in parallel with the main proceedings this year, which is really great. So we're really grateful that the CND Secretariat has managed to uh, make that happen. So basically, the days will be, um, in generally speaking, with side events at lunchtime and in the morning. So there'll be two slots on each time. Uh, and then there are quite a lot of side events. We're going to run through that uh, afterwards. And then you'll have basically three slots where the plenary and the committee of the whole will run in parallel. So you can have a look at this uh, schedule. And uh, if you, I mean, you can take a picture of this. It's going to be available online. But uh, this is also summarized in the organizational ar arrangements document that the CND has put together as well, if you want to, if you want to make sure that you know what uh, is happening when. Um, we will also update all of the schedule on the CND app in the next few days, so you'll be able to create your own schedule there. Just a quick note that the committee of the whole will only be in English, so without interpretation, on the afternoon sessions after Monday. So just something to bear in mind if you're uh, watching live. Um, so in terms of the key agenda items that are going to be taking place this year, it's going to be quite similar to the previous years, so not a lot of surprise there. Uh, Monday is going to start with the opening segments and organizational matters. Um, then on um, Monday, hopefully in the morning as well, because the first two agenda items are quite quick, uh, you will have the general debate. Uh, this is where countries make statements, uh, regional groups and UN officials also make some statements. So that's, uh, that's an interesting one to see the dynamics, especially this year with all the tensions that are taking place um, between Russia and Ukraine. Um, so this, we'll see how this turns out. Uh, just a quick note though, make sure that you check the final program online just to make sure that there's no you know, last minute changes, but this shouldn't change that much uh, from what we're presenting here today. So then on the Tuesday, uh, member states are going to turn to budgetary and administrative matters. 
Um, these are generally linked to the UNODC budget for 2023, any programmatic work and staff composition. So it's quite like, you know, admin oriented. But in terms of the substantive matters, we are hoping, we'll see, but we're hoping to see some discussions um, on the work of the UNODC. So for example, um, how the UNODC is supporting the joint program on the Philippines, uh, how the UNODC is implementing its uh, global strategy. And also uh, for those who haven't seen it, it has just released its strategy for Latin America, which is really supplier oriented and very little on demand and no mention of harm reduction. So, you know, we're hoping for all of these issues to come to the fore in the discussions. <clears throat> After that, um, the CND is going to move to item five, uh, which is on the implementation of the International Drug Control Treaties. This is where the INCB presents its report and uh, where discussions around the implementation of the treaties are taking place. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some discussions there around human rights um, and possibly around access to medicines as well. So there are quite a few items there that could be interesting to, to highlight. Um, then moving on to uh, Wednesday, um, so the item five will continue, and this is also where member states are going to vote on scheduling recommendations from the World Health Organization. So this will likely take place on Wednesday at 2 p.m., and the committee of the whole is usually suspended when uh, member states are voting uh, for scheduling, and the voting only takes place in person. So this is probably going to be the time where the plenary session will be particularly full. Um, so it's not particularly exciting this year. There's going to be very little debate, I think, uh, in terms of the scheduling uh, decisions. So there will be two substances that are up for scheduling for within the 1961 convention. They're both opioids. It's brofin and uh, metonitazine. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the names. Uh, and then for the 1971 convention, there's going to be one substance, which is utilone, and it's a stimulant. Um, very uh, positively, there's going to be no decision on Kratom. And the reason for that is that the WHO ECDD recommended against the critical review of the plant. Um, so it's still under surveillance, but there is no debate right now on whether Kratom should be scheduled. So this is really good news also because IDPC and a lot of our colleagues advocated quite strongly on this. So then moving on to item six, um, it's around the implementation of uh, items within the, 19, uh, sorry, the 2019 ministerial declaration. So it's basically following up on the on-gas implementation and also the implementation of the 2009 political declaration and 2014 joint ministerial segment. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, this is an important opportunity for us to continue putting the on-gas outcome document forward um, and uh, promote human rights, uh, access to medicines, um, access to healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, a, it's an important item and usually that's where a lot of uh, statements are taking place. Um, <clears throat> this one this year is going to be particularly important because uh, in autumn, uh, the thematic debate is going to be on human rights and also on um, policies that are against international drug control treaties, uh, which can include uh, legal regulation. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that plays out at all uh, within the discussions at this year's CND or not. Um, so we're moving on to Thursday. So in the morning, the discussions on the implementation of the 19, 2019 ministerial declaration will continue. And then we'll move on to item seven. So this is also an interesting one because it's on interagency cooperation at the UN level. And this is a key item for IDPC because for a very long time, we have been advocating for more system-wide coherence within the UN on drug-related issues. Um, and uh, as some of you might have heard, the issue of human rights in particular has been particularly difficult uh, within the CND, particularly at the reconvene session in December. Um, so basically what happened in December is uh, some member states refused to let the chair of the working group on arbitrary detention to present their report on drug policy. Um, that was a lot of pushback on uh, the working group participation, but there was also a lot of support for their participation. And that's why we see a lot of clashes uh, within the CND. 
Um, we're still hoping that the chair of the working group will be invited to present in Vienna face-to-face, uh, -face. Um, but we don't know. So it's going to be, yeah, an important opportunity, I think, for member states and for civil society to make strong statements in favor of the participation of UN experts focusing on human rights, on health, on development, et cetera, et cetera, at the CMD. It's also an important opportunity to continue highlighting the UN system common position on drugs and their testing report from 2019, and also to question the UN ODC leadership in terms of implementing the common position, which has been very, very weak so far. So then we are going to move on to a slightly less exciting agenda item, which is item eight. Uh, this is usually, uh, well, this is focusing basically on the reports from the heads of national drug law enforcement agency called ONLIA. Um, so they hold meetings throughout the year and that's where they basically uh, present the findings of these meetings. So then moving on to Friday, um, we will start the day with um, item nine on contributions to the, pro, of the CND, sorry, to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Um, this is an important one because it enables us to continue promoting the alignment of drug control with the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And the commission is basically invited to think about how to follow up and how to, um, contribute to the SDGs. And unfortunately, this agenda item is often ignored by member states. Uh, there's very few statements made and they're very quick. Um, so if you're in a position to push your government to make a good statement on this agenda item, it would be really, really welcome. And so finally, the last two items that I wanted to mention very briefly are item 10. So it's basically negotiations on the provisional agenda for next year's session, the 66th session. Uh, this usually goes without too much debate. And then <clears throat> the, the last item is basically on the adoption of the report for the 65th session. So this is usually quite important uh, because member states can, uh, you know, question the report uh, and say, well, we've actually mentioned this and this is a very important point for us So make sure it's incorporated. So in the past, for example, some member states have pushed back uh, when the secretariat hasn't reflected adequately uh, discussions around harm reduction or around human rights, et cetera, et cetera. So it's an interesting one to follow. So we are now going to turn to resolutions. Um, so I will pass on the word to Nasli, and thanks so much, Nasli, for doing this for us. Um, just a few words of introduction be before Nasli starts. Um, so at the time of producing uh, this webinar PowerPoint, uh, we have basically been aware of six draft resolutions. These are not available on the CND webpage yet, but they should be in the next few days. So do check regularly to see if they're there. Um, for now, we've put them in random order because we don't know in which order they will be uh, placed on the website. We don't know their like numbering, uh, you know, usually it's L2, L3, L4, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so resolutions this year are not necessarily groundbreaking in a way. They're mostly about issues related to supply and to prevention. But it's also an opportunity to ensure that the more like-minded or friendly member states can engage fully in the discussions around these resolutions and push back on negative language from these resolutions. So it's still going to be quite interesting to follow the debate. And the reason why there hasn't been like super controversial progressive resolutions this year is that last year we have really seen the challenges of negotiations within a hybrid format and in particular with a lot of member states trying to uh, engage in the negotiations online and it's been uh, it's become progressively hard to find consensus on key human rights and reform issues um, so the hybrid format doesn't help but this predates also the hybrid format it's just hard at the cnd to push for good un agreed language and obviously as you may know russia plays a very critical role uh, within the cnd to push for very conservative uh, very war on drugs kind of rationales um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how these um, how the diplomatic um, issues turn out and the tensions are going to be to the roof with what's going on right now. Uh, I don't know if some people have been uh, following what's going on in the General Assembly, but basically three quarters of the member states um, came out of the room when the Russian delegates started making their statements. So it's highly likely that these will translate uh, within the CND room as well. 
So, Nazli, you have the floor. Thanks so much for your patience. And um, yeah, go for it. First resolution. Thank you so much, Marie. Hello, everyone. As mentioned, my name is Nazli Maxudi, and I'm with the Center on Drug Policy Evaluation in Toronto, Canada. And just in case some people aren't familiar, the CDPE supports the development of evidence, rights, and health-based drug policies at local, national, and international levels. And we do that specifically through research and outreach. So thank you so much to IDPC for inviting me to be here today and to take us through the six resolutions that have been tabled for the CND this year. I appreciate Marie has already Already given a little bit of an overview of those and I would certainly echo and folks will see as we go through them that there is unfortunately not a strong public health focus on the resolutions that have been tabled this year um, and in fact one might argue that they do not really move forward many of our key goals as the drug policy reform movement but nevertheless there's always room to improve language and ensure good language does remain um, so that will be certainly a focus for drug policy reform organizations at the CND this year. So starting here with the first one on the slide, um, and I should note as well that looking at the CND website, sometimes folks look for resolutions, but they're termed draft proposals on the website. So if you do keep an eye out on the CND website for the resolutions, you can find them there, hopefully in the coming days. So the first resolution is one from Thailand, Peru, and Germany, and it's titled Promoting Alternative Development as Development-Oriented Drug Control Strategy, Including Measures to Protect the Environment. And for folks that have some experience at the CND, this might seem a little bit familiar to you. And the reason for that is that this is really an annual repeating resolution on alternative development that comes from these three member states every year. Now this year, the additional focus on environment is quite positive. But of course, there are ways in which the resolution can be improved. So one is uh, going back to something Marie had mentioned about the notion of system-wide coherence. Given the relevance of interagency collaboration on this topic, thinking about the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, the UN Environment Program, or even as, you, as Marie had mentioned, the common position on drug policy, which actually has an explicit direction for action on strengthening interagency cooperation in rural and urban areas, bearing in mind environmental protection and sustainability. So including language referencing those UN agencies agencies and bodies would make this resolution more relevant and, and have a more positive um, inclusion of language there. Another piece that would be helpful is for the environmental connection here to be broadened beyond the typical focus on illicit cultivation to include the environmental effects of drug policy itself such as, for example, the harms that are caused by crop eradication, and as well as the harms that come with some alternative development programs themselves. So that would be a welcome addition. And then the last point here that I'll make on this resolution is that additions related to Indigenous rights would certainly be an important asset for this resolution. So I'll go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So the second resolution here is from Russia, and it's titled Strengthening International Cooperation in Combating the Misuse of Information and Communication Technologies for Drug Trafficking and Drug-Related Money Laundering. Now, this is likely to be the most contested resolution, both thematically, as I'll discuss, but also for the geopolitical reasons that Marie already outlined. Now, this resolution is actually quite closely linked with Russia's push for a new United Nations Cybercrime Convention and efforts to include in that convention specific language relating to drugs. Now, the resolution, as it's been tabled, overstates the role and significance of online drug markets and understates or really ignores the potential for harm reduction opportunities using these technologies. It takes quite an alarmist approach and it lacks some of the necessary nuance um, that I think should be included. So this would benefit here from recognizing that overall sales on major darknet markets really have remained modest when compared to the overall illicit drug market and sales as well as the reality that evidence clearly shows whenever a cyber market is shut down, new ones appear soon without any significant impact in the size and growth of the online markets overall. In addition, we would benefit here from pointing out that information technologies are also used to develop innovative demand reduction services, particularly in the COVID-19 pandemic context. This was also included in a resolution at the CND last year around the pandemic. So it would be important to recognize the positives that can come with these technologies as well. 
Moreover, this resolution would be improved if there was some language on the digital and human rights, particularly on freedom of information and privacy, and including in the enforcement of responses to cyber enabled, enabled drug trafficking. So I'll leave it there and move to the next resolution. Thank you. So this one here is from Mexico and it's titled Strengthening International Cooperation to Comprehensively Address the Links Between Illicit Drug Trafficking and Illicit Firearms Trafficking. This was actually the last resolution that was submitted to the CND Secretariat. So it did come as a bit of a surprise to some member states and civil society organizations alike. Um, and that our understanding is that this really stems from Mexico's deep and longstanding frustration with the flow of firearms from the United States into Mexico, which the United States has really done little, if, if anything at all, to try to address. Now, longstanding followers of the CND might think this one looks a little bit familiar because there was actually a resolution in 2008, CND Resolution 5111, which was titled Links Between Illicit Drug Trafficking and Illicit Firearms Trafficking. And this resolution does actually repeat a lot of that language from that resolution, but it goes further to call for expert meetings on this topic as well. So I'll move us to the next resolution. Thank you. So this one is actually submitted by the previous and current European Union presidencies, France and Slovenia here on behalf of EU, and it's titled Promoting Comprehensive and Scientific Evidence-Based Early Prevention. Now, in the past, most CND resolutions on prevention have actually been proposed by more conservative member states. So this resolution presents an opportunity for like-minded member states to include strong, positive language on prevention. It already includes positive language on the need for prevention programs in order to be effective and evidence-based, language that should be retained, a focus on women, youth, and people impacted by social marginalization, in particular in situations of armed conflict and humanitarian disasters, are important to retain throughout the negotiations. So that's some language that we would hate to see lost but it could be strengthened by adding some language around prevention programs needing to be non-stigmatizing, as well as the importance of providing training to health professionals on evidence-based and non-judgmental prevention. Moreover, this resolution presents an opportunity to actually request that the UN Office on Drugs and Crime support and monitor adherence to existing the existing international standards on drug use prevention so that those can be actionalized and implemented uh, in an improved way at the domestic level. So I'll move us to the next resolution here, the penultimate one that I'll talk about today. And this one is from Australia and it's titled The Safe and Secure Handling and Disposal of Synthetic Drugs and Their Precursors. This resolution is also positive in the way that it has a focus on the environment. Again, this is the, the first time that a resolution is really considering the impacts of drug control here, of course, the safe disposal of chemicals on the environment, rather than just focusing on the impacts of cultivation and production on the environment. So a, a welcome focus for sure. Now, such language on environmental impacts of drug control should be protected, in particular, the wording that is related to the sustainable development goals is important to retain. It could be improved by making more links to human rights and in particular adding language around the rights of indigenous peoples that would be an important inclusion. And in this uh, resolution as it stands, there is an existing call for more research about methods that are available for disposal and handling, and also about the impact of illegal manufacture of synthetics drugs. Now this could actually be expanded to document the impacts of disposal on the environment and human rights, including the rights of indigenous peoples. Moreover, it would be a welcome addition if research from civil society and UN agencies other than the UN Office on Drugs and Crime were encouraged as well. So those are ways in which this resolution could be improved. And that'll bring me to the final one. Thank you. And this one is from the United States and it's titled Intensifying Efforts to Address the Proliferation of Uncontrolled and Designer Precursors Used in the Illicit Manufacture of Drugs. This uh, resolution aims to support the International Narcotics Control Board or the INCB's work and give them a mandate to continue working on the control of precursors. 
Now, as with all scheduling issues, it's really important for us to consider whether there is a risk of blurring mandates between the INCD and the World Health Organization. Precursors of narcotic drugs are actually included in the 1961 convention and are thus within the mandate of the World Health Organization. Yet the term precursor is sometimes used in different ways. So there's a bit of an issue here with terminology that could potentially be used by INCB to expand their mandate into what would actually be the WHO's mandate. So this could be improved by really being clear around terminology, particularly we could draw from the INCB's own guidelines to provide a clear definition of precursors and the language used in this resolution, and then to use that language consistently throughout. So I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to any questions and comments. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nazi. that was really great. Um, if you have any questions for Nazli or for me, if anything's unclear, please feel free to use the Q&A functionality of Zoom or the chat or the chat on YouTube. Um, so we're now going to move to uh, talk about the other events and including side events. So as I said earlier, there is uh, quite a lot of space for side events this year, and we actually have a required number of side events again this year. Um, so we've counted about 134, I think, side events taking place during the week. Uh, so we really, you know, hope that you'll be able to attend some of them. Um, so these will be taking place online exclusively. And just a reminder um, that you have until the 9th of March to send the links and the flyers of your side events to the UNODC. Um, and of course, please email these over to us as well so we can update the CNV app. Um, sorry, I'm really, I apologize to the interpreters. I see that we're going a bit too fast. <laughs> so just for me and the other speakers, we need to make sure that we speak as slowly as possible. Um, we're just too excited about the CNV. So um, IDPC has shared the agenda of the side events on the RCND webpage, so you can have a look there, and it will also be shortly posted, hopefully, on the UNODC CND website. Um, so a list of side events organized by IDPC and IDPC members will also be po produced by us uh, at the Secretariat, and we will also put those on the website and share them in a special alert that will be coming um, before the CND. As always, in addition to the side events, there will be informal NGO dialogues with the heads of WHO, CND, UNODC, and the INCD. Um, so the questions that will be asked are those uh, that are being coordinated by the VNGOC in advance. Um, but last year, there was actually some additional time for all of these um, informal dialogues for additional questions. So, if your question hasn't made it to the floor or if you have additional questions that you haven't had the time to submit ahead of time, um, do prepare them in advance and make sure that you stay until the end of the event on the off chance that you might be able to ask it. And that's great because it gives a bit more of a level of interactivity and spontaneity <laughs> in, uh, in, these, uh, in these dialogues. But um, Whatever happens, these are really important events uh, to hold the heads of these agencies accountable for some of the key issues that we are facing and that we're having difficulties in them giving us an answer to. So it is a good opportunity to engage in those. They will be online so anybody can attend them. In addition to those, and if we can go to the next slides, um, the VNGOC will hold its annual general assembly around the CND. And this will be held in two parts. So the first part is scheduled on Thursday, the 10th of March at 3 p.m. Vienna time. And this is going to be on Zoom. And the second part is going to be held on the 17th of March, which is the Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, Vienna time. And so this year, the VNGOC members will elect three new board members, a deputy chairperson, a treasurer, and a secretary. And so the way it works is that a separate vote will be held for each of the board's positions. Um, and that will be done online between the 14th and the 17th of March for each of the candidates, one after the other. A simple majority of the votes is required to elect the board. And for the first time, the nominations committee 
um, of the VNGOC has proposed a slate of candidates for the election to ensure that the board is as balanced as possible. So from the IDPC secretariat, we're encouraging all of our members who are VNGOC members to support this slate of candidates. Hopefully you can all do that. Um, but do bear in mind that only the NGOC members in good standing can vote. So that means that you have to have paid your membership fees for 2021 and 2022. Um, so please make sure that you check the VNGOC website, that you pay your fees, and then you will be able to vote. Um, one quick thing, if you are in good standing and you do want to vote, uh, you need to email the VNGOC before the 9th of March with the email address of uh, the person who will be casting the vote on behalf of your organization. And then the representative will receive a key and that will enable you to go on the platform and vote for each of the three positions. So same as always, if you have any questions, let me know and we can answer those at the end of the event. So, um, okay, so in terms of uh, on the ground experience, uh, we are now going to turn to Charity and John. Uh, so Charity, if you would like to start, uh, feel free to tell us what was your experience at CMD and uh, what you drew from it? How has it impacted on your advocacy? So thanks so much for joining us and you have the floor. Thank you so much, Mary. So hi everyone, um, I'm Charity Monaring. I am the Parliamentary and Policy Research Officer at TVHIV Care. So I started engaging with CND in 2019 in my role as a Parliamentary Officer. Um, so my role was essentially to engage with parliamentarians and identify key stakeholders or key delegates that had an influence on the drug policy landscape in the country. Um, so the outcome of which was for me to um, track commitments that were made at the CND as well as um, check how or check the country statements that were made at the CND, um, not only for South Africa, but for countries within the region um, and also some influential countries at the CND like Russia, uh, for example. So following the CND, my task was then to follow up identify um, as, as um, so essentially to identify them and to follow up with them on CSO engagement back at home, so back in South Africa. Um, this was particularly important because a lot of what was said at the CND was not really reflective of the reality at, um, on the ground. So it was important for me to um, hear what the all heard and try and see how we could try and influence the statements that were made at the next CND. Um, so how that experience um, has impacted my work um, since engaging with the C, um, our persistent advocacy really, particularly with the National Department of Health, of Social Development, um, we have seen how um, currently the South African network of people who use become a strategic partner for the Department of Social Development, which has resulted in the department themselves coming to us to ask for consultations on how to work with people who use drugs, have any discussions or any activities relating to people who use drugs, we always consulted and invited to these activities. Um, other I mean, other impacts have been, personally, I've been able to author a few policy briefs on how to advocate at the national um, and regional level. So whatever said at the CND, I'm trying to link that with what is the AU and seeing how CSOs can um, hold their countries accountable um, to the commitments that they make at these um, high level meetings. Um, within the region, I've created very good working relationships with CSOs, and I have, I'm gradually becoming like a point person on policy reform or policy discussions within the region. And then advice I would give, um, remain persistent. You need to remain persistent. It's very um, frustrating when you go to the CND because you, you're going into this uh, meeting expecting to see changes happening or discussions um, or progressive discussions, but you experience a lot of frustration because things are not being done or being said. Um, countries continue to ignore the rights of people who use drugs. And so being persistent within your countries 
to make sure that your fellow country, your fellow delegates are reflecting the realities on the ground and sharing experiences or successes of policy reforms and not necessarily just using the standard um, reporting mechanism that is used at the CND. Um, the fact that you're attending this webinar is already a good sign you're at the right place to find out on um, what to do or how to engage at the CND. Um, I think one of the key components for me or the key saving graces for me when attending the CND was IDPC's mentorship program. Um, so the mentorship program is essentially to pair newbies with um, more seasoned CND participants and they essentially become your guide from the time you arrive to um, throughout the process of the CND, they explain to you what needs to happen. And so it's been like a critical tool um, for newbies at the CND. Um, the CND app was also key. Um, it's an app that you can download on, on your phone. It helps you track any discussions that are happening. It's, I mean, the CND is very busy and you can't be at, in all these places at the same time. And the app allows you to track everything that's happening, allows you to track where resolution or how far resolutions are, what countries are saying, plenaries, side events, and you're able to schedule your time at the CND. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's all from me. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I'll be happy to answer. Thanks, Marie. Thanks so much, Charity. That was really great. And it's amazing to see how the CND has been a way for you to really advance policy reform in South Africa. And it's wonderful to see you know, how, how this is moving forward. I mean, it's slow <laughs> and the CND can be incredibly frustrating, but I think, you know, it's, it's a really great reminder for us to see CND as one point in our advocacy journey, rather than just, you know, the CND as like a separate or independent thing that's taking place. It's really something that should really fully incorporate it into your own advocacy uh, strategy. So we're going to move on to John Melhis now, who is joining us from Norway. Uh, John, thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, please feel free to uh, also share your own experience, see how you've uh, been handling the CND and what you've drawn from it and how it's been helpful or not uh, in your own advocacy at national level. Thank you, Marie. Um, thank you very, very much for the opportunity to say a few words about our advocacy at, and involvement at the CND. My name is John Melhus. I represent the Norwegian Association for Humane Drug Policy, which is a user organization. Um, we work on three levels nationally, on the street level and contact with people who use drugs, on system level, where we work with authorities to try to find solutions, and on a political level, where uh, we try to address the effects uh, of drug policies on affected communities. Um, this dialogue meeting, coincidentally, is exactly on the same day that we were called into a um, dialogue meeting with uh, the Norwegian Minister of Health um, to give some feedback about what we think Norway should uh, be addressing at the CND. I just came back from this uh, meeting, actually. Um, this dialogue meeting is actually how it all started uh, from our end. Um, it was a direct result of uh, action, uh, of activist action, actually, uh, fully driven by idealism, peer and user organizations with limited resources. Uh, because back in uh, 2015, uh, we made a petition which, uh, where we demanded that our voices also be heard and that we, the users and user organizations, also want our views heard at the UNGAS and the CND. And up until then, it was only the temperance organizations which uh, had been invited by the, the government. Um, due to this petition being printed in the media, the Minister of Health invited us and, and other civil society organizations for a dialogue meeting where we could give our input on what Norway should focus on internationally. In the same letter, we had also recommended decriminalization, by the way. Uh, and this was one of the tiny little drops that made uh, the then Minister of Health changed his mind eventually on, uh, on decriminalization, which is very nice. It was also a meeting where one of the ministers, uh, AIDS, wrote the word ECOSOC on a whiteboard, and uh, which I quickly Googled and found out, hey, 
let's let's apply for this and uh, we applied and we got our uh, ECOSOC uh, status uh, just two years later so we're really lucky um so now after this this dialogue meeting has become a yearly event after this and we're really happy that the new government has uh, included this as a tradition in the future as well which is really nice um with our ECOSOC accreditation in 2017 we have yeah we've purchased Created in the CND since. Um, in the beginning, it was a bit overwhelming, uh, a bit difficult to find our place in such a special setting. Um, but after a while, we've, yeah, step by step, increased our efforts and advocacy. And in 2020, we organized our first assignment where we spoke about the importance of cooperation between civil society and author authorities. Uh, this is something we tried to highlight both on the national and international level. Um, 2021, we joined forces with IDPC and uh, my colleague Ariel Knudsen held the uh, intervention there. Um, and uh, this year we're going to organize uh, another side event about uh, this time on Nordic criminalization and decriminalization models. Um, we feel that engaging in the CND is really important. Uh, UN conventions, of course, have an impact on national level. Um, and but sometimes it's even also the other way around. Sometimes things that happen on national level has impact on UN uh, level. So um, our main focus is and will always be to bring is to bring the use, user perspective on the table and provide insight how laws affect people. Uh, this year we hope that human rights and sustainability goals will be get some extra attention at the CND. Uh, the advice I would like to give people who would like to um, engage with the CND is be patient. It's a steep learning curve, overwhelming sometimes. Uh, take some time to learn the language. And uh, having, having learned the hard way, don't mention countries by name. Um, uh, so we look forward to, to hearing more voices uh, speak on behalf of the affected people affected by current drug policies. Our dream is that this, in time, will inspire even authoritarian and nationalistic forces to see that cooperation between civil society and the authorities is profitable, positive, and enriching. Thank you. Thanks so much, John. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good piece of advice in terms of uh, not mentioning specific countries by name. I mean, this is particularly relevant for um, the side event uh, proposals and flyers. Uh, otherwise, the NODC will get back to you and say you have to change this. Uh, and also in uh, the statements at the plenary meeting. So be very mindful of that because it, it kind of breaks the, the gentleman's agreement at the CND that you shouldn't mention a specific country by name. However, you can always make strong statements uh, with you and those, you know, people know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we have to play by by these silly rules that seem quite extreme and, and very annoying. But at the end of the day, we have to play by the rules to make sure that we can move forward and still do our advocacy uh, within the constraints that we have at CND. But thanks so much, John, for, for sharing this and your experience. It was really, really great. And, uh, you know, if if anybody has any questions again or comments uh, for for John, for Charity, for Nazmi or me, um, please put them in the in the chat. Um, so, in terms of key resources, um, so if we can move to the next slide, yeah, thank you. Um, so, <clears throat> just wanted to mention a few. The first one is uh, please have a look at the official CNZ documentation. This is where you're going to have. Um, all the information around uh, the, the official agenda. Uh, you'll also have uh, NGO papers. Uh, these are submitted ahead of time. I think the deadline was yesterday. Uh, these are always useful. Um, you also have the side events um, program, hopefully very soon, and uh, the webcast link. And you also have the draft resolutions that will be posted uh, in the next few days. So do have a look at this. This is your primary point of contact. Um, if you would like to understand more on how uh, the CND works, et cetera, et cetera, have a look at the VNGOC guide. The VNGOC produces this every year. It's really helpful. It's very well laid out, very easy to read. 
Um, it's available in English and it will be available in French and Spanish shortly. Then you have the IDPC webpage about the CND, where we try to post as much information as we can as uh, time goes uh, on and as we advance towards the CND. So do have a look at that as well. Um, <clears throat> and hopefully you'll be able to access the information that you need. Um, we also, and something, you know, we've mentioned it quite a few times already, the CND app is a key resource that we have put together, I think like three or four years now. Um, it's available for download on the Apple and Android uh, shops, store, sorry. Um, and that enables you to do a few things. So first of all, you have access to all the CND resolutions that have been adopted since uh, 1998, I think. Um, and that enables you to have a look at UN agreed language. So when you want to help your government officials uh, in terms of finding some good language on specific issues, you can actually look at the app and you can just type a keyword and see what comes up. And that is a nice way to just support member states when they negotiate resolutions. So for example, you can have a look at HIV, you can have a look at marginalized, you can have a look at human rights, you know, a whole bunch of things that could be helpful. The CND app obviously is critical during the CND week. It enables you to have a look at what happens when and where. Um, obviously, this year, when it's in a hybrid format, uh, it's a little bit different, but it still enables you, for example, to have a look at all the side events, create your own agenda online and uh, extract it onto your own calendar as well. So it's quite handy. And it also enables you to track what's happening during the week in terms of who is speaking during the plenary session and which resolutions are being uh, negotiated. So, so it's just a nice way to be able to see all the stuff that's happening at CND. We also have a few additional resources that I wanted to mention briefly. The first one is um, IDPC puts together some daily digests during the CND, which are incredibly helpful. It just basically provides you with a very brief summary of the highlights for the day. Um, so if you would like to receive those, please contact uh, my colleague. You have her email address here. Um, we also obviously have our monthly newsletter that enables you to track the developments worldwide on drug policy every month. And we have special alerts ahead of the CND in particular. And we also have the CND blog. This is an absolutely key resource because it enables you to track what your government is saying and what obviously everybody else is saying at CND um throughout the years so you can have you can you know filter and if you want to know what norway has said over the past 10 years you can have a look and you can see how norway's position has changed at the cnd on specific topics um, you can also um, have a look at press uh, side events for example see the kind of tone people are adopting if it's the first time you're going to a to a side event and you're a speaker and you don't quite know what kind of uh, tone to to adopt. You can have a look at that. It's quite helpful. Um, so yeah, and it enables you to basically track what's going on at the CND, in particular for people who are in time zones where it's very difficult to follow the proceedings live. Um, so that just enables you to just wake up in the morning and first thing you do is to have a look at the CMD blog and see what happened last night. Um, so anyway, so have a look at these. And uh, if you're organizing a side event and you see that we haven't blogged it, feel free to reach out to us and send us a summary of your side event and you can also post it there. Um, my colleague Juan is coordinating this. He is planning on uh, blogging about 90 side events with a team of bloggers. So hopefully most of the events that are of interest to us will be posted, but uh, yeah, help us out if you can. Um, so I think that's it from our side. So if you have any questions, we'll have a few minutes. Uh, if not, obviously, you can always get in touch with us afterwards by email. So feel free to always reach out. We'll, uh, you know, we'll make sure that we respond to you as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I don't think I see any questions yet. I'm just going to check with my colleagues if they see other questions on, on YouTube. OK, so there's no questions so far. So let's give each other maybe one more minute. And if no questions, then we will just close the webinar and hope that it has been helpful to you all. And uh, thanks so much for um, joining us. Thanks so much to our interpreters for bearing with us. 
Um, and uh, and yeah, thanks so much, John, Charity, and Leslie again for uh, joining us today, being part of this. For us, it's important that these webinars are not just about the IDPC Secretariat, but it's also about the membership and making sure that our members are able to share their stories and share their experience in how the CND can help um, with their own advocacy at national and regional level. So still no questions. So thank you so much to you all. And uh, a very, very special thanks to my colleague Juan, who's been coordinating all this. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see you at CND, if not in person, at least in, in spirit and online. So thanks so much, everyone, and have a lovely rest of the day.